Okay, hey there everyone. I made a video yesterday, one hour long, decided not to put it up. I'm going to do something else instead for you today. Same theme, but a little different. Um, the point is I was looking into the the program uh, and I, I always keep wanting to call it news busters. It's not, it's news benders. And I don't know why I keep wanting to say news busters. And um, I've looked up news busters on the internet because for some reason that that keeps wanting to come up, but it's nothing of any major. There's there's a website with that name and 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 whatnot, but <clears throat> it's called News Benders, right? The 1968 program. And at first, I was going through the 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 episode, the 30 minute episode, looking looking to present all of the detail. And then there's a lot of detail. I mean, never mind all the pretty obvious stuff, but there's little tiny bits of detail in this thing. And then I realized, no, actually, that's that's just a waste of time. Um, first of all, the people who are watching a channel like mine, you pretty much, you can catch most of the stuff yourself. And, and in general, it's going to be mind-boggling that there's this much presented in 30 minutes. And that's the point I'm making of this video, that there's this much put into 30 minutes. Uh, it's it's inconceivable that this much would be put into a 30-minute program. You know, you've got, you've got a, a movie like They Live, which runs an hour and a half that doesn't put all of that <laughs> in, into an hour and a half of movie. This is 30 minutes or 28 minutes of television program. Then there was all the detail. And, and, and okay, I could say the ring means this, the thing, the desk means this, the folder means this. And then I realized um, it's just not important. It's, it's, um, what would, what would it, what, what would be the point of putting a video out of that kind of detail? It would just, just to show how smart I am. Look at me. Look at how smart I am. I'm, I'm, I can get all of the, And of course, I would miss things. And you would find other things that I missed. And oh, we would put together this giant package of stuff. And then, so what? So what? It's a program that's revealing a whole lot of stuff. Okay. We got that. I'm going to get into what I think is the one thing we should talk about. Uh, and to me, the only thing that's really worth talking about based on where we are now. Again, it's all about where we are, where we are now. Uh, just, you know, I, I've been, I've been busy, not just with getting the, the farm ready. We're still in winter, but it's not, everything's not ready to plant yet. Still, the ground is just starting to get rid of the snow. I've been painting rooms in the house, getting a lot ready for the, the day with Bart Marshall on the 29th. It's a lot more work than I thought it was going to be, um, certainly. And um, so if you're interested, please, by all means, like, you know, it's going to be, I think it's going to be a really interesting day because Bart and I have kind of said to each other, we're, you have to hold back when you make a video, right? I have to, I have to hold back. You can't, you can't just say everything openly, totally openly on the internet. You have to, you have to have a filter day like this, we can take off our filters. We can just, we can, we can talk and we can share any story of our life that we feel is needed for the people that are there. So it's going to be a really good, hopefully a really good, very open day of discussion and presentation. Anyway, news bus, new, news benders. See, I keep calling it that. Why? Why does the word, it's really, really strange. Okay, so anyway, what's important, I think, in this Newsbenders episode to look at is, first of all, there's there's is only three, the cast is only th three. So there's three members of the cast, right? Donald Pleasance, Nigel Davenport, and this woman, Sarah Brackert, who plays the secretary. She, I don't think she has any lines even in the, in the program. So it's mostly between Davenport and Pleasance. Both are well-known actors of the era. Uh, Pleasant's a, a Bond villain, and Davenport played a lot of a lot of roles. Now we go beyond that. We have the director. The director's name is Rudolf Carchier, and Carchier, when you look him up on Internet Movie Database, has a ton 
of credits to his the, to his name, particularly a lot of these type of episodes, these made for TV, um, made for TV uh, little theater series, made for TV miniseries, made for TV movie. So his background makes sense. Then we get to the writers, and here's where it gets very strange. The writer for this episode is listed as Desmond Loudon. Okay. Who's Desmond Loudon? Well, if you go looking for him on the internet, it's very hard to find a lot of information on the guy, which is very, very strange because he is supposed to be a fairly well-known author uh, writing. And this is the thing. He, he seems to have written nothing like this again. All of his stuff is seemingly crime novels. Many of his novels are uh, were made into television programs or, or made into TV movies. So, like, like for example, uh, Bellman and True, I think, was one of them. Uh, Shadow Run, and then most recently, Quicksand, which starred uh, Michael Caine and Michael Keaton. So, you know, another one, The Real McCoy. That one had Kim Bassinger and Val Kilmer in it. So, I mean, a writer of things that became movies with fairly big name actors in them. But when you go try to find information about this guy on the internet, there's like, there's none. Now, he's he's still listed as being alive, which is interesting. He's not listed as dead. So the first thing I thought of is that whoever the writer for this is, is probably dead. You know, so nobody can go and pick up the phone and give him a call and ask him why he wrote this. But when you go looking for him on the internet and, and try it, it's really interesting. He has an internet movie database page, which is how I know what movies he's he's written. Uh, he has a couple of of things that list to some, you know, book sites here and there, Amazon for his books, et cetera, et cetera. But first of all, he doesn't even have a Wikipedia page, which is kind of strange. I mean, he's he, like, a, like a true Wikipedia page. He has a like a simplistic one on this thing called Everybody Wiki. But he, I, I haven't found like the, the standard page of – and I thought every author who's well-known, who is – books have sold pretty well and who has uh has done move has it been made into movies and you know that they, they have a wikipedia page he doesn't have one so that's really strange next i looked into all the movies this guy was actually making today in a little more detail and the books he's writing which are which are yeah kind of crime novels chase stories that kind of stuff it's nothing at all like this one newsbenders clip and when you look at his filmography I, I can't because I can't get a proper list of his novels. That's why Wikipedia is really nice because you get the you get a block of you know and the years that they wrote all their stuff. I don't have that. So he's listed as writing a play, uh, a TV series called ITV Play of the Week in 1965 called No Baby, No Baby at All. We get no information of what that is. Nothing happens <clears throat> for three years until he writes. He's supposed to write this Newsbenders in 1968. Then nothing happens again till he writes a script for BBC Play, BB2, BBC2 Playhouse called Jake's End, which when you look it up has no information on it. And then it's his novel that got turned into, you know, into, into it became a screenplay. Okay. And then a miniseries called Chain in 1990. So it's like this, this thing is just that this, these, this, the writing of this is just kind of sitting there. Um, it's just kind of, and, and that's the point. It's like, it'd be one thing if there were a couple of things potentially being revealed in this, you know, all the news is created by a group and, and uh, <clears throat> there's a computer behind it and we're, we're fixing things and we're monitoring you and okay. But all the, I mean, there's so many reveals being put out in this 30 minute program there's no way the writer could have a known all of this information. It's not, you, you can't just, <clears throat> you can't just take a, take a shot at stuff and say, ah, oh, you know, he's just being, he's just being, uh, he's just sort of hitting things that are in the news at the, at the, at the time, you know, you might say, and he's just, and he's, he's sort of playing, well, what if it's all manufactured and could, cause everything he mentions is important. Whether it's a space race, whether it's nuclear weapons, whether it's missiles, whether it's 
fashion magazines, whether it's, you know, all the stuff that he's mentioning in his, in his thing. Uh, and then with the, the tracking and the, and the, and the having data on people and all, all of it. So, and then nothing gets done seemingly for the rest of the guy's life that has anything to do with this kind of, to these kind of topics, this kind of information. And I find that very, very strange. Honestly, I find that very, very strange. And because of the depth of what's in the 30 minutes, because of the fact that the writer, and there's a second writer, by the way, there was, there was someone known as a script, a story editor, Sean McLaughlin, who seems like that's what he did, I guess, going over going over various scripts and cleaning them up. He did a lot of <clears throat> he did a lot of them for um again, he, he again, the same story editor only is listed as the story editor for this one 30 minute theater. Then he did the story of Christ, Son of Man as a writer. Uh, and then he, he, after that he moves into what's known as script and continuity department. Okay. It's just interesting that potentially the two people who who are claimed to be the writers and the what you might call a script editor, story editor, are don't do anything like this again. And so it's it's making me wonder: is this something similar to what you might what is known in in Ren Le Chateau lore as the um, as all the documents that are in the Paris Bibliothèque? I, I of course, I can't think of the name off the top of my head. The um, yeah, the Ren Le Chateau documents. There's there's a proper name for it. It just is off the top of my head. Which are placed were placed anonymously in the Paris Paris main Paris Library in the 1960s, just as the Ren Le Chateau story began to start coming out. And a lot of the documents are often listed with people who by as being authored by people who were recently dead. Uh, conveniently died in in you know something that happened in the newspaper on January eighth or something, and then in February they're listed as being the the author of a new document that gets placed in. So you can't go check it out, right? Um, I, I get sort of a feeling like that, as if as if they've kind of been added to the to the project, even though they weren't really the ones writing the project they weren't the real writers of this information or if they were why why would you write why would you produce an episode like this or would you write an episode like this and never write anything like it again it would be because you're, you're on the almost on the edge of science fiction there right you you would be if you're saying always oh, writing sort of as a as a you know as a what if kind of scenario then then you've got a bit of a science fiction mind. Okay, so he's got a crime mind. Yeah, but, he's, but you would also have a bit of the science fiction mind. And you, you, I would think you would write one or two of those. You would have more ideas in your head and you would produce, you would produce something more on those lines. So I'm wondering if it's kind of like just an add-in, that it's not, they, they didn't write it at all, that, that it was whoever the writer was, was somebody, assuming it's a 1968 original production. I don't know who the writers then were. Of it, um, and we're still back to the point of was this on in 1968 for real? Because when I check the internet again, there's like almost no information on this right now. There's almost nothing. I've tracked it because I want to make sure I've got screenshots of what's here. So in case in like all of a sudden two months there's a whole bunch of stuff listing on this program, I I want to make sure I have a I have an actual document of what's there, and there's almost nothing. In fact, the oldest piece of it, there's like, you get maybe like a page of it, uh, of searches on the internet. You don't go, you don't get very far, um, to be quite honest with you. And uh, what the oldest, the oldest entry I've been able to find on it is, um, was from 2013. So that's the oldest one I've managed to find, 2013, that mentions the program news Newsbenders. Um, now there's something, yeah, 2020. 2000, I'm just looking at the dates again. So there's 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 nothing that's coming in 
before 2010 at all um, that's mentioning, even mentioning this program, mentioning, you know, Donald Pleasance. He was a very well-known actor somewhere along the way. You would think uh, at least this would have been mentioned that he was all the things he was in that you could find. No, it's like, it's like it just, and it, the, the one, the oldest one I found is, yeah, this one called screenonline.org.uk. And it's showing 2013, 2014. So there's no mention of this prior to that particular date. So um, now what's also weird is when you go into the Newsbenders 1968, because it has a different, it has a producer listed. Now it didn't have a producer listed on the one on Internet Movie Database. And that is a guy named uh, George Spenton Foster. George Spenton Foster. Now, who is George Spenton Foster? I wonder. Good question. I don't know. Um, but so he's listed uh, on the Internet Movie Database as the producer for something called Out of the Unknown. And it's the only thing he's being listed for, which is a classic anthology science fiction series, which fe features adaptations of stories by famous, uh, famous authors, including uh, uh, Isaac Asimov, J.G. Ballard, Frederick Pohl, John Winham and look like sort of a, another Twilight Zone spinoff. So it makes sense because this, this program has more, has more of a Twilight Zone feel to it, right, than it does, um, than it does a theater production. This, this feels like, it feels like you're watching an epi a really cool episode of the Twilight Zone or Outer Limits. So to me, whoever this George Spenton Foster is seems more like a more likely, a more likely, uh, creator of this than um than anything else um i'm just i'm just quickly looking over um a few other things here um and when you look on the on the on the right side of the page you've got see also and it's listing Donald Pleasance, it's listing Nigel Davenport, it's listing Rudolph Cartier, who was the director. And then it lists 1984, 1954. And we find that Rudolph Cartier was the producer of the original adaptation of 1984, of the of the of the of that program. Hmm. Now I've got the date of that. So when I go back to, and I'm just clicking around, I'm sorry you can't see the, the actual clicking that I'm doing, but so I go back to director Rudolph Cartier on the internet, an internet movie database, right? Right. Is your, is your, should be your, your go-to for anything. And when I get to it down at the bottom, there it is. 1984 BBC live TV productions. You don't kind of notice it because you're kind of looking for things recently that he's done. And it's like I'd mentioned, when I quickly mentioned all theater, all plays, but there you go, way, way back, one of his one of his original plays, once he started actually uh, being a part of the production team, because I guess he was an actor first, named Rudolf Katcher. And he did, he did uh, it looks like they did French, German? G German. So he was, he did German stuff. He was, I guess, so interesting. So Rudolf Kart, because they, they look, they look German, but his name sounds French. Oh, because he's born in Vienna, Austria, Hungary. So obviously, probably French, uh, French and English, or French, French and German are probably both his languages. But then he picks up in the BBC, and one of the third things he does is yes, 1984 BBC live TV productions. So he's one of he's so the 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 the, the director of this episode is is the one who was one of the original producer, the original producer, and I guess the director of one of the first BBC adapt, or the, probably the first adaptation of, of uh, 1984. So it's interesting to start to see the, the connection that now it's, and it's only on this one page that really starts to show it, this screen online, where you've got the director who had made 1984, you've got the producer who had been involved in this uh, sci-fi series similar to the twilight zone and then you've got a script writer who has seemingly no background for any of these kind of scripts whatsoever so it makes me really question whether we've got a real program or not now again i'm going to assume it's a real program 
that's a pretty big insertion into this reality. If you're going to insert that uh, entire television program into our reality. But maybe that's why I'm having a problem. Because again, I'm telling you, remember I said I'm having a problem with the name. Something about newsbenders just, I, I, I have trouble picking it up. I, even Every time I have to say it, it's like it's really hard to hold it. I have to, just then I had to really focus my mind. It's very rare. I have to focus my mind to speak. I have to focus my mind to say those words because my mind wants to go to something else. My mind. So it's almost like my mind is telling me maybe there was a program that aired originally on January 10, 1968 called News, News Busters. Uh, yeah, called News Busters. And it was about something else. And though it was easy to make this this program and insert it in. And who knows, maybe you had the original news busters was something between Donald Pleasance and this Nigel Davenport and something happened and all you needed was AI because we have no idea what just what AI can do. And maybe the AI has been used to massage the original production and turn it into something else. I'm going to hold that as possibility. I, 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 I I don't think it would it's just been if it's if it's new I don't think it's been newly created completely. I think it's it's like they overlaid something else. There was a template and then AI could just play with the template a little bit. Um maybe that's why the folder is so large because as they in the initial one it didn't need a folder or maybe he just he was talking about something and had pieces of paper in his hand and they needed to they needed to make they needed to make a change in the insertion of the of the uh, folder when you actually see it is just the wrong size it was just it's maybe it's just an error in in ai's pr production of this so maybe that's a, that's another way of looking at it is not look for the content what's it revealing looking go looking go look for glitches that do you have potentially an original program called news busters that has been overlaid ai has overlaid a totally new story on top of it and that would make that could almost make more sense, uh, but I don't know because again the people involved in this have a background of uh, dealing with yeah 1984 and science fiction, so you, you um, often a writer of science fiction has figured out a lot about reality. You go back and watch those Twilight Zone episodes or read the 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 short stories that the Twilight Zone episodes are based on. There's a ton. There's a ton of stuff being revealed in there. Like these men and women figured stuff out. What they did with it or how they presented it or how deeply they knew things, you know, we don't know, but there's obviously they knew something. They weren't just it wasn't coincidence that all this stuff was being thrown in there. It's not coincidence, it's in there. It's just a question of is this an original production or is this produced now and made it look like it's going back in time and why would you do that? Like because I you get this so often. There's two things that bother me about this kind of stuff. One is, uh, oh, it's it's this rule that the people who are running this reality have to reveal what they're doing. What? That's stupid. I mean, just lo I'm sorry. Logically, that's stupid. There, there, a, a, a rule that says that. Come on. Oh yeah, we can't create the simulation unless you follow this particular rule. No. No. If stuff is being revealed by the people at the top, there there's a there's a there's a reason a lot much more than just they have to show things before they do it. No, no. There's something there's there's then some energetic level that they're actually working on that's manifesting through what they're doing. They wouldn't they wouldn't be putting stuff out because they have to. Um, sorry, there's a couple other things about this stuff that just bugs me, but that, I'm just going to leave it at that one. That, that one just, because I've heard that one for 20 plus years, you know, um, and of course, so far, no one has come across a contract of the simulation between the simulation and the people in charge that shows me the document that they signed with the creator of reality that they have to they're obligated to reveal stuff. So I'm sorry. There's probably a lot of you that really believe that and you're going to be upset with me, but I, you know, I don't care. I'm just going to be quite honest. Um, I, I'm, I'm, 
I'm getting lots of uh, I'm getting lots of attack actually recently anyway, so why not get a bit more? Who cares? But that's just my personal opinion. I can be wrong. Like I'm wrong about a lot of things, right? But it does that just hasn't made sense to me for a long, long time. So if this is recent, why are they putting all this in? If it's if it's recent and it's because it's not being made by like if it's being made now by artificial intelligence and reinserted back into history to make it look like it was there, it's not being done for something positive. If you're doing it retroactive like that, you you just you wouldn't do that. You'd be putting stuff. You'd be implanting stuff right now about today, not stuff like that that no one's going to pick up. What's the point? So if it's being done, it's being done for for some other some other control like purpose or some other. Again, maybe like Matt says, it's just to give people a giant distraction, um, focusing our time on something else that's not what's happening right now because right now is a mess and it's it's going to get more insane. People don't don't think it's anywhere close to over. It's coming. The next round is coming, and um, yeah, you, you better be, you better be mentally ready. It's it's why I'm it's why Bart and I kind of chose to do this thing. Some of you say, why am I doing it? Why am I? I never done anything like this before. It's because we kind of feel we don't have a lot of time left, and so we better use it well. We and so we better whatever we have to say. I'm working hard on my novel right now. I'm working really really hard because I don't know how long we actually have before internet and things are shut down. And, and even if I finished my book, no one would be able to read it because you can't get it. You can't access it. You can't do anything about it. So I'm working really, really hard. And it's very, I'll be honest, it's very, very difficult. I'm having a very challenging time because the, the, the material and the fact I've got to own this material, I've got to, I've got to take it to another level. I've been looking into dark city. I've written a chapter for my book on dark city Great movie, by the way. Um, but something that's very clear I wrote in the novel, I wrote in my a chapter about it, is that, but again, John Murdoch doesn't escape Dark City. He doesn't exit the cave. He gains control of the cave, but he's there alone. All the other people are asleep in their memories. They're asleep in the last memory of this, that the strangers gave them. So he's in a world that, nice now, it's got ocean, it's got sunlight. Seems nice, but everyone's still asleep. He's the only one that's awake inside the cave, but he's still in the cave. He hasn't left. So it looks like Dark City ends with great hope, but it ends with actually more hopelessness. And if you realize that the Matrix is actually the continuation of Dark City, you see that in time, the whole of Dark City, the whole realm simulation gets completely taken over. So... Did they really gain anything by what they did by making the cave nice? By making the cave nicer, they wound up potentially in a worse situation. But it's all in my, it's all going to, it's all in the chapter in that book that I hope I can get done for you in a few months. Anyway, if this was made originally in 1968, then, then you're dealing with some of the best science fiction, the most astute Whoever actually put this together, and in some way recognizing that no one's going to pay any attention to it anyway, they're just they're just saying they're just telling some people. I, well, we figured it all out. We 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 got the whole thing down, you know. And uh, it's the presentation of everything that they're revealing is brilliance. Their science fiction knowledge is brilliance. Their their ability to, cr to create a script is brilliant. Um, I'm going to try to get a hold down with some uh, scripts by this guy, by this, uh, this Loudon guy, um, that he did for his movies, for his uh, novels, I should say, and see if the, if the type of dialogue and the interaction matches what you see in this 30 minute play to kind of say, is this, is this really, is this really the script writer of this? Or was he just, was he just somehow listed on this? And really it's this Cartier and, um, uh, and uh, the other guy, that they're the ones who actually wrote it. And uh, Cartier and, and this Spent and Foster, they're the ones who actually wrote it. And Lawton was just used as a front man so that no one would, he would deflect some of the attention. I, I don't know. But that's, that's what I wanted to tell you. 
And the, the detail, the actual detail of all that's being said in this is actually, as you can see, it's not important. This stuff is way more important. This stuff is way more important to try to figure out who actually put this together, when did they put it together, when did it air, and more importantly, why? Why would you actually air it? And if you just throw out the standard answers like the one I gave, that would be the usual answer, right? Step back and whatever your usual answer is, ask, ask yourself the question, why would, if this was on the air in 1968, or if you think AI created this like five or six years ago and inserted it in the dream, why? And you're going to, you'll have an answer. An answer will come to you. It'll be your normal belief structure. That's what you're going to see. You're going to see your personal belief structure. Okay. That comes up first. Discard it. Don't, don't take your, don't take your standard one. Discard it. Say, I'm going to put that aside. I'm going to pretend even though that's what I really believe, I'm going to put that over there. What would be the next answer you have? Because only by looking for other possibilities to explain why this, why this program exists could we find the real answers to what it means and to what other programs and other movies like it have meant over the years. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, back to my writing. I found they got some sunlight, so I'm going to get out and get a walk first. I'll take the video camera out because we're actually supposed to get some nice days. So I promised you I would show you around the farm so you can see it. So I'll do, I didn't want to, what's the point of showing it to you when I'm bundled up in a, you know, giant jacket. So um, I'll do that in a few days for you just so you can get a look at it. Uh, it's a lot of, it's a lot of work to get this thing ready for, for Bart and I. And of course, Bart's the main show. You know, I'm just, I'm, I'm just the. I'm just a warm-up act in comedy terms, right? Bart's the Bart's the real guy doing the show here. Um, so I'm kind of I'm kind of the I'm the production guy doing all the all the work, and then and then the uh, the actor gets to ride in and do his thing. So uh, yeah, that's just what I had to say for you today. Is is looking into this? It just got really really strange. So. Um, uh, keep me posted on what you find. If any of you go deeper into it and pick up something I haven't found, I'll be curious if we get an answer as to what this might actually be or not be. But I can tell you, it's well done. It's it's well presented. It's well. It's unbelievably well written and scripted. And I'm wondering who really did it. Cheers. <laughs>